You guys, welcome back. And guess what? I am two subscribers away from 500. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, um, as you can see from the title of today's video and the thumbnail, we are going to be doing some Winnie the Pooh nails. And um, I have just really been into nail art a lot lately. I've been watching a lot of Nails by Dev, her lives, her YouTube channel, all kinds of things. And I'm like, you know, I tried to paint Dopey once upon a time and it didn't work out too well for me. So I was like, you know, I want to do, let's try something else, right? So here it is. This is me trying something else. So I decided to do Winnie the Pooh and um, I was obviously successful at doing that and I'm very proud of myself. Um, he is like this really cute like gold color and the yellow that I had was more of like a mustard yellow. So... I'm just using um, some Born Pretty colors, and you can see here that I am using base coat to clean my brush. It's the best way to clean your brush, in my opinion. It, I, it just irks my soul when I see people people take like those thin brushes and sit and mix their colors, and I let the brush just kind of like do everything, and I'm just like, oh. Like, my soul hurts. Like, I always mix my colors um, because I want to get the long, best longevity out of my brushes. And I just feel like it's going to tear up the brush even if it doesn't. So, personal preference, um, I clean my brushes out with base coat. And I use a tool to um, mix the colors or mix any colors that I need. So, I do two coats of this uh, full coat on two of the nails that I'm going to do the design on or the nail art. I like doing character nail art on solid colors. I did a Grinch set that turned out really cute and this is similar to how I did the Grinch. Um, and then I am also going to be going over um, some talking points on the nail art process and how I work through doing nail art basically. So, um, and then that will give you guys some time just to watch the video with some music in the background. But I do have five main points. Um, the first one is to choose a focal point and everything else will follow after that. So um, you definitely want to make sure that you have a reference. Use a reference and from that reference choose a focal point on where you want your picture or your painting to start. Um, depending on how big or small, this is kind of leading into point number two. Depending on where you start or how big or small that focal point starts, it depends on the scale of your character. And I'm not talking about the weight scale. <laughs> I'm talking about the scale as in how big or small your picture is going to be. So um, it is really important, especially if you're doing multiple characters, because when I did my Care Bear nail design, I kind of got carried away and... Um, I wasn't liking the initial color on the pink Care Bear and then on the second one I did the Care Bear way too big and it just looked crazy or funny next to the rest of the Care Bears because it just didn't match um, size wise right it was just way too big and it just I, I had to do it again so the third time was a charm and I finally got it but Drawing your characters to scale, especially if you're doing multiple nails or multiple characters, is really important unless you're intentionally trying to, to do something smaller or larger than, than the other nails. Um, if you're uh, the third point, uh, that leads me to my third point. So if you're doing a 3D nail design, um, you want to try to view it in layers, right? So if you don't want to do an outline or something like that, then you can always like start with the more opaque layers first like the layers that you know or the shapes like kind of try to look at your picture and shapes and layers to see like how am i going to do this and how would the lines look over this um, and kind of give yourself a guideline of where you're going to put the next layer or what's going to go on top of that so that way if you want to do some shading um, to make it look 3D or maybe, you know, like 
I don't know, just go over that <laughs> um, with your line work, what, whatever you're trying to do or whatever you're trying to achieve. That's another way to also look at nail art is in layers or by shapes, um, depending on what the character looks like. And then number four are uh, guidelines, right? So some people draw directly on a matte nail with a pencil, which is fine. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. But knowing myself, I make a lot of mistakes when I do nail art. And I don't always get it on the first time. So with that being said, I do not draw on my nails with the pencil as you can see here i am starting to work on my focal point which is winnie the pooh's nose i felt like that's very iconic and um it's like big def it's like the center of his face right like you can't miss it so if it isn't depending on the scale of his nose um the more bigger that he's going to get and that is like my guideline i'm not going to use pencil because acetone and alcohol can wipe that away really easy so yeah for the guideline if you want, um, in my case, I'm just going to use black liner gel. So Beatles liner gel is my favorite. And um, I also started going in with Phoenix Nail Co. Super Black. That is an amazing black and I have been using it ever since. And yeah, they have 50% off on their gel polishes right now. So if you want to head over there, I think they only had three left in stock. So so another way that you can draw your guidelines is just by using gel polish and um, make sure that, of course, you're curing whenever you need to. Please cure when you need to. Um, I have a habit of just to keep going and going without curing. And then I get upset because I'm like, I can't get all the black off or I want to wipe a certain way and I can't <laughs> uh, because it's polished so even if it's like a 10 second cure uh, eventually you're going to be doing a full cure on the end or you should be curing or doing a full cure when you're done with the entire nail and after a bunch of the little 10 second cures you know some of your first lines are going to be fully cured by the time you're done anyway um, so yeah really important to cure as you go along with the guidelines you can draw with gel polish um it's just easier to wipe away and use as you go um, versus using a pencil if you might not be as, how do I want to say that? I don't want to be rude, right? Like maybe if you're not as skilled or if you're a beginner and you need to wipe the lines away a lot like I am and like I do, I have been drawing for a really long time, like since I was a kid. Um, I've been drawing since forever. So I've just had a lot of practice throughout the years um, with drawing and I'm all I completely self-taught just like Nell's completely self-taught with the help of YouTube and my nail sisters and things like that. So yeah, so that was number four. Um, depending on your preference and guidelines, you can either draw on the nail directly like a matte nail with a pencil or just use your gel polish and things like that and lightly cure. Um, which brings me to number five. This is the final point that I wanted to point out or how I, how I do nail art <laughs> in my personal preference. So this is all subjective. You don't have to use this or you don't have to take my advice, um, at any given time. It's just how, how I work through it. So even if you're going in and you're just doing like simple 2D nail art, like I am doing in this video, it is, um... I don't know why I keep losing my words, but <laughs> the outline is important. Like right now, I'm not doing very thick lines because this is kind of just my outline as far as how I want him to look and how I get the shape of things. But eventually, when you go in and you do your final outline, then you would want your lines to be heavier. Some lines you want to be thinner. So depending, your line weight depends on the pressure on the brush, right? So the, the obviously the more you push down, the more it's going to, your bristles are going to expand and the wider your line is going to be. So light pressure really helps with that as well as like, keep in mind, the more you saturate your brush or the, the more pigment and stuff that gets in your bristles, the softer the brush is going to become, which is why I use base coat to clean my brushes, right? It's going to absorb all of that pigment and everything out of the brush because it's clear and it's also going to soften my bristles before I use the brush 
which is another reason why I also like brushes with lids <laughs> um, is because the lids are going to help that base coat. The base coat might dry out a little bit, but it's at least not going to, you know, make your brushes or your brush stick together. Or, but it's also not going to allow your bristles to fray um, and cause all of those like crazy off to the side lines that you don't want in your nail art. Anyway, back to the outline. <laughs> so yes, depending on on the pressure that you use with your brush, it's either going to expand the bristles or keep the bristle bristles really bristle, bristles really tight and neat. Um, as like as you draw your lines, if you want your lines very thin. And these are some nail art brushes that I got off of Amazon with a discount code, thanks to Sandra's Sparkly Sets. I really, really like these. Um, they are actually a very good quality in the way that she was explaining them in her review and her video. They were really awesome, so it did help with the outline process having good quality brushes. So yeah, um, but yeah, the more the more product, basically, like I was explaining before, like with the base coat situation, the more product you have in your brush, the softer your bristles are going to get. So just remember to adjust to that as you are going through the process until it is your bristles are completely soft or soft enough to the point where um, you're comfortable with it and, and you get used to it. So yeah, I'm just going to leave you guys with Winnie the Pooh. Um, let's run through the nail art process one more time. So just always make sure to have a reference and use a focal point. Depending on how big your focal point is depends on the scale of your drawing. If you're doing a 3D nail design, then break it apart in layers. Um, or if you don't want to break it apart in layers, then you can go to number four, which is like use guidelines, either using a pencil or drawing the guidelines with your gel polish. And then for the outline is number five, just to give your character a little bit more um, definition, especially if you're only doing 2D nail art and you're not going to do a bunch of shading and try to make them 3D. So I enjoy 2D nail art. It is one of my favorite things to do, like I mentioned before. I have done some Jack Skellington and some Grinch nails prior to this, along with trying to do some other variations of nail art. <laughs> um, I actually did my Care Bears after this. I recorded this way before I did my Care Bear nails. And I am, um, yeah, still way behind. So this is part number one, and then part number two will be how I design the rest of the Winnie the Pooh nails. So they did turn out really cute, and I really liked all of the designs. Um, so stay tuned for part two. Definitely hit that subscribe button, you guys. Like I mentioned, we're two subscribers away from 500. And once I get there, then that is officially when I will be doing my giveaway since we were already so close to 500. I have already started getting the box together and getting everything together that I want to be in my giveaway. And it is like way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Plus I might add, I will be adding in extra goodies and maybe give you guys um, your own money to spend. So that way it's not just like an Amazon gift card or something like that where you have to spend your money. Um, you could spend it anywhere that you want. So yeah, um, and maybe some extra goodies that way so you're not just subject to what I give you. <laughs> and um, in the event of my giveaway, I do hope that you guys pay it forward. So if there's anything that you don't like in the giveaway um, or anything that you don't need and you might already have, then please, please, please give it to someone else who is also a nail enthusiast or enjoys doing nails or would like to start. But we will go ahead and get into those details in the actual giveaway video. I do like to show people what they're about to receive or what they're going to receive because... Um, I don't know. Either you you will like it or you won't like it. And if you don't like it, then you then you'll be you'll be more encouraged to participate if you like the items that are in the giveaway kind of thing. And then the people who actually want the stuff will participate. So yeah, like I said, we'll get into that because I am only two subscribers away, you guys. It took me so long just to get to five hundred. I mean, I'm talking like two and a half years. Like it literally is about who you know and not about what you know sometimes like i've seen people go literally from zero to a thousand in like two weeks um they just started their youtube channel or they're coming back or they're you know and and then 
there are some extremely talented people out here though and and it just it kind of makes me upset that they don't get the notoriety that they deserve or as quick as they deserve it so here is to 2023 and all of these love and success and everything that you are looking for if you are currently watching this video i am rooting for you and um I'm really excited to see how my channel grows this year. I'm going to keep trying to push and push out this content no matter what. Um, nails is one thing that I love and I just absolutely cannot put down. So I'm just really trying to step up my game because I just feel like I haven't been like doing enough really. Um, I've definitely been doing a lot, but just not enough. <laughs> and um, I look back, I'm like two years and I've only posted that many videos or two and a half years and I've only done that much. And I just started doing shorts and reels and things like that. So try to keep track of all of that and all the social medias and the medias and the blah, blah, blahs and hoo hoo ha ha's and whatever. <laughs> um, it's working. It's working, right? Um, the more I post shorts, the the more followers or the more subscribers that I get and all the good things. So, um, but I'm glad that it, it is, it is paying off. Yeah. Very happy about that, but I'm going to leave you guys. Um, I'm going to stop rambling on and I wish you guys all the same love and success. Like I mentioned before, and of course, I always want to thank you so much, so much for being the best part of my channel. And I will see you in my next video.